Revelation chapter 6, look at verse number 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. This is talking about the martyrs that are being killed during the tribulation. The people who are preaching Jesus Christ and they're being put to death. And they're seen in heaven under the altar, the souls of them that were slain, verse 10, and they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord? But God, we've just been killed. We're being slaughtered down there. How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? These, these martyrs are calling out to God and saying, God, we avenge us. Bring justice on these people. They're not saying, God, forgive them. They're saying, God, avenge us. Avenge us. Bring justice to those wicked people. Verse 11, And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. These are souls of people in heaven. Do you think that they're just in the flesh when they're saying, Avenge them, O Lord? Uh, they don't have any flesh. Their flesh is down on the earth. They're up in heaven. The sinful flesh is gone. They don't have that anymore. So what's all that's left? Their soul and their spirit. Are they sinning in heaven before God? Because I don't think so. They got white robes. How are they going to be sinning? It's righteous. That's why their indignation and in calling on God to bring judgment is righteous. They're not bringing the judgment themselves. At no point do we see that. At every single reference here in the book of Psalms, it's calling on God. God, bring justice. God, bring your vengeance. And when God brings vengeance, there's no reason not to rejoice when the wicked are slain. And that's who got slain in Orlando was a bunch of wicked people. Wicked reprobates. Which is why I am not one little bit ashamed of what any of my friends have said publicly and have gotten attacked for. Amen. Not one bit. Why? Not because they're my friends. Not because I'm just trying to show loyalty to them as a friend or as a person. Because they're speaking the truth from the Word of God. That's why. Because it's righteous. Because what they said is right and is true and is biblical. Amen. That's why. <clears throat> Let's go back to Proverbs 11. It is shocking though today, and I understand that. It's shocking for people to hear that. Why? Because it hasn't been said for so long. And when parts of the Bible get forgotten... They get skipped over. They don't get preached. They don't get read. I mean, how many Christians out there today are even reading their Bible cover to cover? It can be a shock. When you're, when you're listening to the world's music, when you're watching the world's movies, when you're reading the world's media, when their, their newspapers and everything else, when you hear this part of God's Word, it's shocking. But you have to ask yourself, what does the Bible say? Because that is what matters. That is how you define integrity. Are you making decisions? Are you, are you living your life based on what this word says? Or what the world says is what's popular? If you're a man of integrity, you're going to stick to the principles of the Bible and not back down in the face of any opposition. 